welcome to this tutorial about FM synthesis. I'm using the Zen FMTS2 synthesizer. This is a VST plugin and you can download this from the link in the description. So check that out now. Um, you can install it and even if you know nothing about FM synthesis, you can just follow along with what I'm doing. I'm going to try to make some like classic FM sounds, kind of thing you'd hear on the Sega Genesis or AdLib sound cards, that kind of style. So, at first glance, this synthesizer looks like, oh my god, what am I going to do? But actually, I'm going to break it down and it's going to be quite simple. First things first, I'm going to get a blank patch. Okay, I chose a patch that says init. It's a good starting place. Uh, 109 init is fine. And I am going to choose from FMRM algorithm, the one that goes uh, like this. A and then the little arrow B, arrow C, arrow D. And what this does is... Your D is your is your carrier, and C is going to modulate D, B will modulate C, and A will modulate B. So actually, I can mute, I've already muted uh, all of these. Okay, this means they're muted, and D is the only one that's playing. So if I start playing something, we only hear D. It's this high-pitched sine wave. Well, I can change that to a soft ramp if I want. It doesn't sound that soft. So anyway, I'm going to bring my, my frequency down. Then if we turn on C, we can hear what's happening. OK, so suddenly we have some kind of FM sounds. I'm going to increase the attack a bit so you, it sounds more clear exactly what's happening. beautiful right so what if you want to make like um really cool fm bass let's just try and do that first i would i would make op d a bit higher now it sounds weird to have that be higher up but it's going to work out because op c i'm going to make this lower in fact change this asterisk into that and it's actually going to divide by this number instead of multiplying. So the frequency of OPC is now like an octave lower than the bass frequency. And we can make it even lower than this. Okay, it could be a bit too low, let's see. Uh, you see what I've just pressed here, the shift. This will shift the entire thing down an octave, so I'm going to put this down one octave. Okay, what I'm playing with here, this ADSR, is just the, the shape of, of the modulating signal. So with A really high up, it very slowly evolves. But if I put A all the way down to zero, it, that modulator will instantly en enable. And it will sound a lot more static. Actually, I want it somewhere like about here. And the S that was previously at 75, I've moved it up to 100. If I put it down low, you'll hear what happens. The modulator comes in and then it fades away. See, it just disappeared. But if I put it up to S, it will no longer fade away. You'll just get it staying there. Okay, I'm going to try and enable operator B now. So B is going to modulate C, which modulates D. So we've got modulations on modulations, and that's just how we get the most distorted, dense FM sounds. This one I'm going to have a slower attack. Alright, so now we're getting somewhere. Perfect, right? I mean, we can create some more movement in that by enabling the LFO. So in FMTS2, you can have the envelope generator and the LFO going at the same time. Uh, you know, even if I had the L just the LFO, you'll hear something like this. Mm -hmm. 
the problem with that is when I press the note down it may suddenly jump into the LFO and there will be a lot of distortion even though I want to have some kind of movement I still want to enable my envelope generator that way I can use this slow attack see the the envelope generator and the LFO they kind of multiply together so um, even if the LFO is running if the envelope generator is still ramping up to its to its highest value then um, this modulator signal will be low so this is what we want to enable So I'm feeling like the LFO is a bit too strong. It doesn't need to have this much effect. So I'm going to turn this down. Maybe about there will do. Uh, we'll listen back to it in a second. The other thing I noticed about my LFO is I want to, um, I want to make it maybe a bit slower so that that movement is more gradual. So we can change source edit to LFO. Now we expose some parameters about the LFO. I'm going to enable sync. That means every time I play a note on my keyboard, it will it will start the LFO from the exact same phase. So each of my notes is going to play the same. Otherwise, some of them are going to feel a bit more hollow than others. This prevents that from happening. And then durations, I can use that to, uh, to change the timing of the LFO. So pushing it this way makes it faster, I believe. Um... Which actually that might be the sound you want, uh, or something slow is more, more soundscapey. In fact, that was so slow you couldn't even hear it. But if I move it down to say this, you can hear that movement in the synth. Okay, it's looking pretty good. When you're at this stage, you can. Um, pretty much just mess with things at random and you'll come up with these just wonderfully old school sounding patches so I'm just gonna mess with the the frequencies a bit if you can hear a perfect fifth in there then your ears are working really well see the third harmonic is actually an octave plus a perfect fifth so if you want to get octaves you would use one two four 8, 16, etc., down to 32. Those are your octaves. Oh, 32. Um, but 3 is actually a perfect fifth above an octave. And this is a major third above two octaves. And this is a perfect fifth above two octaves. And then so on, all the way up the harmonic series. Because it's all related to the harmonic series, the timbres you create will have that kind of solid sound. Maybe another day you want to mess with the partial files. Uh, those will allow you to have detuned harmonics that correspond to certain equal temperaments. Really crazy microtonal spectrum kind of stuff. But I'm going to leave that for today. Oh, another thing is, if these sounds like really harsh to you, like the high frequencies, we can actually tone those down. Um, at the top, if you set your control edit to Ensemble, and then you can turn on this low pass filter. I would probably set it at like 18 dB and even put it down a bit. And then it's really going to soften up that treble. But you know, if that's too extreme for you, turn it to 6 dB. It's a really, really gradual roll off. So you're still allowing a lot of that treble to come through, but just taming the really, really high frequencies. I'm going to leave that disabled to save everybody's ears. So we can make this super noisy. I'm going to enable the, the fourth operator now. So we have modulators, modulating, modulators, modulating, a modulator that modulates the carrier. So that's like super dense. And isn't that awesome?
you know, with your LFO, you can change the waveform. If you want a rhythmic effect, you can use things like the square and uh, the saw and the ramp um, signals to get kind of rhythmic effect. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to like it, but I can demonstrate that now. We'll show the square, turn the duration up a bit higher. There's a kind of rhythmic thing happening inside that. It would be more obvious actually if I turn the LFO up to maximum. So these, these kind of things are all there for you to play with. Now one problem we might have with this sound is if we play too many notes at the same time, it's going to sound like a mess. You know, if I try and play a major third or something. I don't know, that's just incredibly nasty. But what we can do is if we change our control edit over to MIDI and then we can enable mono mode. You can play it like a bass line or like a lead. Um, whenever you press uh, one note, and that really helps to clean things up. Of course, one reason we use FMTS2 and not any other kind of synth is because we can microtune it. It's developed specifically for you to explore microtonal scales. And it comes with so many built in. I'm going to select, uh, you probably can't see this right now, but I'm going to select something quite simple like 7 Tet. You know, this is so easy anyone can play it. It's essentially a diatonic scale but all of the notes are made equal. There's no whole tones and there's no small tones. They're all the same size. So you can use something like this when you're creating your patches so that you can just hit random notes and it kind of sounds like music. And actually this has revealed that this patch that I've created doesn't really sound good in, in high octaves. So best to play it low where you can just make earthquakes. Okay, another thing you might have noticed is that as I hold the note down, it kind of gets loud and then it comes back down again. This is because all of this got, runs through down into this amplifier modulation section here. And this can control the overall um, envelope of your sound. So I don't really want that sustained stage to go down like that. I'm going to put it 100% so that when I do hold a long note, it stays at the full loudness. So what I'll do now is I'm going to save this one and I'll upload it to my website so you can download it and uh, play with it yourself. I'll call it FM Live. If you have made a sound you like but you want some variations on it, try messing with this FM RM algorithm. At the moment, I have it set to this and I didn't really explain why I did that apart from the fact that I want all of these to modulate each other. Well, there's other things we can do. You notice some of them have this asterisk and some of them have a plus sign. Well, plus just means that the operators are going to add together. So they won't modulate each other at all. You'll just hear them play in unison. So that's good if you want some organ sounds. It's pretty much all it's good for. But just choose these at random and you can get variations on the sound that you've already created. So that's, you know, one way to experiment. Okay, hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Um, I've barely scratched the surface of what this synth is capable of. I just wanted to keep things really simple and, and have, you know, create classic recognizable sounds first. There's actually a lot more you can do. So make sure you download from the link in the description. You can play with this yourself. It is Windows only. It is 32-bit only. But if you get it working in your door, it would be really fun. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Peace and out.